Good morning, good afternoon, good evening guys, wherever you are on this beautiful world, whenever you're watching this YouTube video, welcome to the Bitcoin Family YouTube channel for the newcomers, my name is Didi, today doing my walk and talk again here on the beautiful beach, and the sun is rising over there guys, talking about Bitcoin ETF, talking about the Bitcoin price, talking about some other news as well, really cool video, watch the complete video till the end, and of course always use the links down below, the first links of course are to buy it because it's the best exchange out there, if you want to see the beautiful sunrise in Portugal Lagos, let's see it over How beautiful do you want to have it? I'm a little bit late, a little bit late. I woke up at 6.30 in the morning and the sunrise is at 6.50. So tomorrow I will wake up at 6 o'clock so we can see the beautiful sunrise and all the colors, guys. Now, the Bitcoin price at the moment is around 29,130 which is pretty strange as the ETF in Europe was accepted and started yesterday. So there was a battle going on between the United States and the ETF. You all know that one of the BlackRock and all the grayscales and all that, all those. But yesterday uh, the ETF was approved in uh, the Euronext Amsterdam by Jacobis. And the ticker of this ETF is called Bcoin. Really cool that Europe paid America and this, but what does it do? At the moment it didn't do anything. At the moment uh, it made the Bitcoin price go down again to 29k levels. And it is a spot ETF, which is very positive. That means that you really need to hold the Bitcoins. So um, in the next couple of months, this could change the whole Bitcoin industry a bit more because more and more um, institutional investors will have a way to invest in Bitcoin in a very safe and secure way through an uh, ETF at the Amsterdam Euronext. It also means that the European investors are a step ahead of the United States investors because in Europe now all the investors and institutional investors and investment funds uh, can start to buy the Bitcoin ETF which is of course very positive because there is not that many Bitcoins around. There's only 21 million Bitcoins in the total in the year 2140. At the moment, 17 million Bitcoins, 17, are in the hands of long-term holders. So if they want to buy a lot of Bitcoins, yeah, you should launch the ETF as first. That's exactly what happened now in Amsterdam. Uh, they launched first. So these investors in Europe will have the chance to buy Bitcoin instead of the investors in the United States. The CEO of Jacobi Investment stated uh, that he thinks that the ETFs will be the uh, electronic boost for cryptocurrencies uh, for the whole institutional adoption of Bitcoin and many other company in a simple, transparent and easy way but, for, uh, but, but most important, safe way for European investors. Really cool news, uh, Europe, the first win ETF uh, let's see how it affects Bitcoin. At the moment, 29,130. Uh, they should be able with those billions of dollars or euros, I need to say, <laughs> to push Bitcoin above the level of 30K, isn't it? Let's see how it influences this. But you know my real opinion about it, but I will come back to that at the end of the video. The second big news of the day, guys, is that the Argentinian president, Javier, Javier, Javier Millet, I don't know how you pronounce it, but I think Javier Millet, is a pro Bitcoin um, president. He even stated he wants to stop the central banks in Argentina and replace them by Bitcoin. So that's a huge adoption possibility over there in Argentina. South America is growing really fast now, guys. We have already El Salvador. We already have a very positive Brazil. We already have a very positive Mexico. And now Argentina will be added to that list with a president that has said, I want to stop the central banks and I want to start promoting Bitcoin for our country because that will fight against all the inflations that we have now because of the central banks and the US dollar. Really positive news as well. When it comes to trading today guys, I don't have any beautiful charts uh, because you know at the moment 29,100, we are below 30k, you should be buying Bitcoin. Uh, you should not be freaking out about the minute charts, you should zoom out 
and look at the bigger picture. And one of those bigger pictures is, for example, now um, that the Argentinian government has a president and lost Bitcoin. One of the biggest pictures now is that the Amsterdam Euronext has listed the first ever Bitcoin spot EDF by Ken Jacobi's fund. So all these factors should make you very positive, should make you realize, uh, yes, I should be in Bitcoin now because the bull run is ahead. We are nearing the halving. halving. Halving is in April 2024, probably the 26th of April. Uh, we are nearing that date. Until that date, we will go a little bit up and down and it'll be a little bit volatile. But from that moment, we will slowly go into that massive bull run again that we have seen a couple of times already in history. So that will take all the way into 2025, in my opinion. Somewhere around September, I believe that the bull run top will be there. So you should be buying Bitcoin now every day, guys. And I know most people uh, now look at Bitcoin as this investment tool, but Bitcoin is not only an investment tool, guys. Bitcoin also is uh, an improvement of the monetary system. If you look at this and chart, you can see the difference between uh, transactions through Visa card or MasterCard or through the Bitcoin network. There is a huge difference. Bitcoin is the cheapest method to transfer money. Just analyze these numbers. It's not that difficult. MasterCard is costing you 3%. Visa card is costing you 3%. Bitcoin is costing you 0.00029%. There's way less than MasterCard and Visa card. So yes, also there, fundamentally, Bitcoin should replace MasterCard and Visa card when it comes to using it as a payment or transaction, uh, transacting capital all over the world, guys. Very important to understand this. So yes, trading-wise, dollar cost average, keep buying Bitcoin because there will come a pump and that pump that will be pushing Bitcoin above 30k again. So there would be now a 1k profit on one Bitcoin if you buy around 29k. Now the tip of today guys is if you're trading always use a take profit or a stop loss. You never know when your community of a currency is going to pump or dump a currency guys. You know you never know when the pump or dump will be there. You can't predict the future. So always play safe. Always use the stop loss so that you will lose the maximum amount that you want to lose. And always use and take profit because you should be taking profit because you never know when the community will dump on you or the projects or the investment funds will dump on you. Profit is profit. Be happy with what you have and not what you don't have. So if you have profit, 5%, 10%, 20%, we can even see 100% profit in this industry then take profit. For example, I now went in this uh, altcoin called Osak because it should be the new Shiba Inu. I am now up 40% almost. Of course I'm taking profit. And when the price dumps, I can always buy back. It comes back to the tip of yesterday. Never feel the pressure of staying in a currency or getting into a currency. Profit is profit. Where can you make 40% profit a day or a week? If you make that profit, take that profit, buy back in the dip, there will always be a new trading opportunity. There's always a new trade passing by. Tip for today. And when it comes to opportunities, guys, something very important comes to my mind. Because opportunities in life, they don't just happen. They are created. And you can create your own opportunities. How? Let me give you a very simple example. For example, you're driving to your job today, and after work, what do you do? You finish, you're tired, ah, let's quickly drive home and start the normal routine again. You don't have dinner, and then go sports, and then watch Netflix, and then go to bed, and then wake up again, and then make breakfast, and then drive to the job again, etc., etc. At this moment, you're living in this uh, cycle that doesn't give you uh, any opportunities. If you want to create your own opportunities, you need to break that cycle. For example, tomorrow when you drive home from your job, stop at that village that you always pass by and you always think, what will be there? What is this for a village? Stop at that place. Put your car somewhere there and take a walk in a neighborhood. Maybe you will meet new people. Maybe you will uh, see opportunities. Maybe you will pass by a business opportunity like uh, like a building that is uh, there for rent. And maybe you want to start your own business over there. Or maybe you walk into a store and you talk to other people that give you opportunities or ideas to create a new opportunity. 
That's what I mean. You need to break that cycle. And then you can always get back in your car, drive home and do your dinner and go to sports and watch Netflix again. But you need to create your own opportunities. If you're thinking about creating an online business, then you need to create this opportunity. Go to locations or events where many people are that have created online businesses, a conference or whatever. Meet new people. See other possibilities, see other ideas. And that is how you create your own opportunities. They don't just happen, you need to create them. Sun becomes really bright now, guys. It's coming up beautifully. And, and when it uh, comes to uh, traveling, guys, I have a next traveling tip. Because a lot of people ask me, but Didi, if you're all in Bitcoin, how do you book your trips, uh, your flights and your hotels for Bitcoin? Now, we always try to book them direct, which means um, I will search them, for example, on Airbnb, a beautiful apartment or house. I will contact them. You know, you can't leave behind your uh, number, but you can always send a message and tell them, hey guys, I would love to uh, come in contact with you. I would prefer to pay in Bitcoin if that is possible. And you know, from the 10 that you ask, mostly two say, yeah, that's possible. If you can't pay directly with Bitcoin, you can always use a party to a third party to pay with Bitcoin. So for example, uh, flights, you can book on Travala.com. Hotels, all the hotels you can find on Booking.com, you can also buy, uh, book on Travala.com. Travala is this uh, beautiful travel website where you can pay with not only Bitcoin, I think with more than 200 other cryptocurrencies directly for flights for hotels. Yes, I need to agree. It's not always cheaper than booking.com, but at least it gives you the opportunity to pay with Bitcoin. So that's another one. Then there is another one that's called Excel Trip, and there is another one called BTC Flights, and I, there's a complete list of these. I think I wrote a blog on that like a couple of years ago. Maybe I need to update that blog with the newest possibilities how you can pay with Bitcoin, but there's many ways to use Bitcoin or any other cryptocurrency to pay for your hotel to pay for your flights and your hotel bookings. It is not that difficult anymore. It was, but nowadays you can book everything with Bitcoin. Use the links, of course, down below the video, because then uh, you get an extra bonus in booking, and we earn a little bit of commission, which makes it possible for me to book another flight to the next destination. For example, I don't know, Thailand is already booked, maybe from Thailand, a weekend trip to Bali or something like that, guys. So that, uh, always remember to use the links. If I talk about projects, please support me and my family by using the links down below. Bam. Now, let's get back to that uh, story about the ETF in Europe. Yes, of course, I'm happy that Europe is the first one that does the ETF. But do I think ETFs are positive for Bitcoin? Now, in my honest opinion, they aren't. They are positive for the Bitcoin price. Which means, yes, uh, your sex and stats will be pumped probably because now a lot of institutional investors will hedge a part of their capital in Bitcoin. And because they hedge a part of their capital in Bitcoin, uh, you know, the price will be going up. And of course, that is very positive for all those that are in Bitcoin and just to become a millionaire or a billionaire, or maybe by now some of them are already trillionaires. But it's less positive for those uh, who are in Bitcoin for the revolution or for the poor people that would love to use Bitcoin as a peer-to-peer -peer cash because they don't have access to the monetary system, to the current monetary system, the current monetary fiat system. Please do understand, cash is still around in many countries. And as long as cash is here, the poor people have access to the monetary system in a freedom way, which means they can spend their cash to whatever they want. But the moment cash will disappear all over the world, and we will live in this new digital age, and we all know that's gonna happen because we all know that there will be a cashless society because we can see already that like only 3%, I think, of the money around in this world is still cash. But when we go cashless, there needs to be a new peer-to-peer -peer cash uh, that can be used in the same way as the cash that we're using today. And that should be Bitcoin because Bitcoin is that one that can replace the current cash in the digital way, guys. Which means you still have the freedom to do whatever you want with your own BTC in the future, with your own money. Because if it will be a central bank's digital currency, you know you will be stuck in a social credit system tied to an economical system um, that's called the central bank's digital currency, which means they completely have control on you. If you don't do something that they like, if you don't do something they like, let us say it again, or you don't obey them, maybe like that, you need to kneel and obey. If you don't kneel and obey, 
and they will freeze your central bank's digital currency. And they have the full ability of doing so. And then there's also what we have seen already, like happening with normal money in Greece, um, like in uh, 2014, you know, when the bank accounts were frozen of those people that worked really hard, but there was an economical crisis. So they decided that people could only withdraw a couple of bucks per week um, from their bank account. And now in the future it will be only be more easy for them if they have a central bank's digital currency. So I started talking about the ETF. So why is it that I don't like the ETF? Of course I like it because it's gonna put my capital as well and I can share more capital with poor people in the future. But I don't like it because uh, the rich are becoming richer and the poor again becoming poorer because slowly those rich that always um, use investment funds or ETFs to buy, buy shares or by now buy um, Bitcoin, the rich people use these ETFs. Do you really think those poor people in the Moluccan Islands or in Africa or somewhere in uh, Asia, that they buy Bitcoin using an ETF? They are not able to buy Bitcoin using an ETF because they don't have access to the system. So that is why I don't like it because the rich will buy a lot of Bitcoin and that means a lot of Bitcoin won't be available anymore to those people that really need Bitcoin. It is exactly the same thing that happened to gold. Gold was from the normal people, from the normal people it went into the banks, from the banks it went into the governments and now normal people don't have any gold anymore. It is all beautiful stored in safes in the government banks or the central banks. You know, the, the, that's like the same steps now with Bitcoin and that's what I don't like. It was created by the people for the people. Now the rich people start to take over because they make it possible for the rich people through an investment fund and an ETF to buy Bitcoin so there will be less Bitcoin to the people. And in the end, the government will say to those rich people and investment funds again, nah, we will take control on Bitcoin. You can use Bitcoin, deposit at us, we will keep it safe. Uh, and you can hedge your capital with us and get maybe a beautiful mortgage and back for it or something, you know? That's the thing, that, that's the steps they always create. And I'm not a big fan of that. So I'm a fan of a beautiful decentralized world uh, where we have full control on our own currency instead of give control to, a, you know, governments that have other plans with me than um, I would love to see. You know, the whole 2030 WEF scheme. I don't want to see 15 minute cities. I don't want to see my kids grow up in a 15 city minute, in a 15 minute city. I want to see my kids grow up in freedom. In freedom in any kind of way. Now, that was the whole video for today, guys. I hope you really enjoyed this video again. If you did enjoy the video, give the video a thumbs up, share it with your friends and family, subscribe to the channel, hit the notification bell, and leave a comment. And yes, always give it a thumbs up because Didi got up early again to create a beautiful video with a sunrise. The sunrise that you didn't see because I was walking that direction. But check how beautiful that sunrise is, guys. How beautiful do you want to see a sunrise in the morning in Lago Portugal? Amazing, amazing. That's how you should say it, Didi. Thanks for watching. Wish you an amazing day. <laughs> and see you tomorrow again. Bam.